Hello again, Haskellings. Welcome to day three of the Advent of Code 2021. Now, our input file is a whole bunch of binary numbers. So let's start as usual and use the interact function to pull in those numbers. We're going to do a map of map of equals to one as a character to get that uh, to get back that array as a list of list of Boolean values. The first thing we need to do is then transpose those values. And what transpose does is it flips the rows and columns. We're going to need a function that can tell us whether there are more trues in one of those columns than falses, because we need to find the most popular value for each. So when we map that function over the transpose of x's, then we end up with the most popular value for each column. We have a read bin function that we developed last year that's able to read in those values. And then for the other value that we need to multiply by, we just have to map not over those to get the least popular. So it's now complaining that there's no num instance for maybe ints. So let's write one. But let's generalize it to any maybe a where a is also a num, which means we can just use the existing multiply operation and lift that into the maybe type. And the same with plus. Now let's just save that and it should uh, give us a warning to tell us what else we need to implement. And we need to implement the abs, signum, from integer and negate functions. And I can implement those with a simple fmap except for from integer, which of course requires us to take an integer and make a maybe from that value. Now that we've done that, we can just use the from maybe function to turn our maybe int into an int, and we're done. Now, part two requires us to do something actually quite different. Uh, so, well, first let me move the num instance into our advent of code module, because I think that will actually be quite useful. So now for part two, we need to calculate the CO2 rating and the O2 rating. We're going to use the same recursive algorithm for both of these. So let's just keep them the same for now. And the base case for this algorithm will be when there's only one element left in the list of lists. But we also need to keep track of the results so far, which will be prepended to that resulting list. OK, let's use subfunctions to calculate the next result and the filtered list, or what remains of the list. So the next result will be similar to what we had in part one, except we're going to be operating on the head of each of those lists. And we're going to favor the true side when the results are equal. We can now filter the list to keep all of those items that have a matching result in the head of that list. And then we can keep just the tail of those lists by mapping tail over that result. The last thing we need to take care of is to parameterize over the call to G based on the comparison function. Having first class functions in Haskell is quite beneficial for this purpose. And with that, we should be done. But of course, there's some errors. The base case x's doesn't need to be wrapped in square brackets like that because it's already a list of bool. But also, this r here should be appended to the existing results. So that should be our correct result. So until tomorrow, I wish you health and happiness and happy Haskelling.